In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to apply the principles of deliberate practice to the guitar. This is a follow-up to another video I made called How to Practice Like a Boss. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I highly recommend that you watch it first, then come back here. You'll find the link down below in the description. About a year ago, I decided that a good way to level up as a guitarist would be to add thumb slapping and some other percussive techniques to my skill set. This would satisfy step one of deliberate practice, which is to find a new challenge that's above your current ability level, but one that's appealing enough to be highly motivating. I really like a John Mayer song called Stop This Train, and I would love to add it to my set list. So that checks all the boxes for step one. Step two is to break the task down into small manageable chunks. So I went sniffing around YouTube to see if I could find some good tutorials for Stop This Train. The good news is that I found several. The bad news is the technique Mayer uses in that song is more than just one or two levels above my current capacity. To get there then, I'm going to need some intermediate steps. I'll have to find some songs that use similar but less complicated percussive techniques. As it happens, and because everything always works out for me, a YouTuber named John Michael Swift has apparently been reading my mind. He has created, and I am not making this up, a set of videos that teach the very skills that I'm hoping to gain. He calls it the Pluck and Chuck series, and you owe it to yourself to check it out. It's nothing short of amazing. The link is below. John has selected a set of popular songs that use thumb slapping and other percussive techniques, and he has made a tutorial about how to play each one. Then he collected them all in a playlist and arranged them in order according to their degree of difficulty. Working your way through the series then not only teaches you how to employ percussive techniques, it gives you a bunch of new songs to add to your repertoire. Win-win. Since my goal is to improve my technique more than it is to learn a bunch of new cover songs, I won't be learning all of the songs in John's set completely. For instance, I'm not a big fan of Jason Mraz's song, Did I Fool You? So I won't waste any valuable practice time memorizing all the lyrics, or even the song's full structure. But I do intend to learn the slapping technique that John teaches in every song that he's included in his series. And Stop This Train is near the middle of the list. As a result, in my quest to learn one difficult John Mayer song, so far I've already learned the following songs as a bonus. So to summarize, step two has already been done for me by an excellent teacher. John has already broken the primary task down into small manageable chunks. Step three is to gamify your practice. One way to do that, and this is a method I forgot to mention in the companion video, How to Practice Like a Boss, is what I call the perfect repetition challenge. In this challenge, you don't let yourself move on to the next segment until you've been able to perform the current segment perfectly 10 times in a row. Every mistake sends you back to number one. Truth be told, the number you choose is pretty arbitrary. 10, 12, 20. I'm not aware of any scientific consensus on the subject. But it's certainly safe to say that the higher the number, the greater the level of mastery you're demonstrating. Five perfect reps doesn't say nearly as much about how good your sixth rep will probably be, as much as 15 perfect reps says about how good your 16th rep will probably be. Although I'm sure there's a point of diminishing returns in there somewhere, this is not one of those places where less is more. So just taking the song More Than Words as an example, once I got the first finger picking pattern uh, into my memory, I started trying to play it 10 times in a row without an error and without looking at my hands. Then I added to the challenge by playing it at higher and higher speeds with a metronome. That's the first pattern. Forgive me for 
for not using a metronome in this demonstration. I'm just trying to save you some time. So I did that until the right hand pluck and chuck pattern had become second nature. Then I went to work on the second picking pattern. <laughs> That takes us to step four, which is stitching together the sections that you've been working on in isolation. Once I mastered each pattern through gamification, I began working on the measures where the chords change and where one picking pattern changes over to another. So pattern one, pattern two, pattern one, pattern two. And I worked on that until I could do it at high speed without pausing between patterns and chord changes. The hard part for me now is to maintain constant speed when I play the song at performance tempo. I've gotten so used to playing it fast that now it seems to drag monotonously when I play it at its uh, intended 90-ish beats per minute. To combat my tendency to speed up, I'll occasionally play it at half speed or even slower. pretend I used a metronome there. I know the song well enough now that I never feel the need to look down at my hands, but if that weren't the case, I'd also gamify it with an occasional blindfold challenge. More on that in a minute. So that's a zoomed in look at step four, but if you zoom out, you'll see that in addition to stitching together the pieces within each song, as I work through John's Pluck and Chuck series, I'm also connecting skills that I've learned in one song to skills required of another, all in the service of reaching my primary goal of playing Stop This Train. Step five, as you'll recall, is to celebrate victory and go back to step one for a new challenge. Personally, I get so much satisfaction out of improving on the guitar that I don't need to reward myself after every small victory, but I almost always celebrate the completion of a whole new song or a technique by playing it for my friends or by recording a cover version. <coughs> after that, I choose a new challenge and I get back to work. Let me drop back to step three for just a minute and discuss the blindfold challenge. The songs in John's Pluck and Chuck series, at least so far, don't lend themselves to that particular kind of gamification because the hand positions don't change very much. But I have been doing the blindfold challenge with another song I've been working on called Remember Me. It's the beautiful lullaby from the movie Coco, and there's an outstanding tutorial for it on Rob Swift's YouTube channel. No relation to John as far as I know. The link's down below. That song starts out with the left hand remaining in one position for a while, but after a few measures, we encounter a small jump. And then a few measures later, we get into a couple of very large jumps. Being able to hit these jumps without looking isn't necessary, but training for that skill greatly increases your muscle memory as it relates to your instrument. And it contributes to body mapping, that sensation that your guitar is a natural extension of your hands. I'm gonna work through this now a little bit without looking. There's an introduction. Remember me, my hands kind of stay in the same place here, remember me, here comes a small jump, and then a much bigger one, missed, remember me. As you can see, I got a long way to go in the body mapping department, but let me just pause here for a moment with a quick aside. Uh, by videotaping myself, I noticed that I was making a mistake that I hadn't caught before until I saw it in the video. When I'm doing this uh, slide, for a long time I'd been deadening that B string. It just happened to line up exactly with the crease in my index finger. So not only do I have to teach myself how to hit that vertical slide, I also have to teach myself to move my fingers just a little bit so that crease is no longer there. Another shout out to principle four, record yourself. Anyway, 
With these steps and with the principles detailed in my How to Practice Like a Boss video, you now have all the tools that you need to level up rapidly as a musician. So don't just sit there, go practice. But you know, really practice. Practice deliberately and intentionally. And hit that like button down there on your way out. That helps people find me on YouTube. And who wouldn't want to find me on YouTube? See you next time.